Okay, we're back and we're talking vectors. In particular, we're going to talk about vector addition. That's the most important skill that we'll need in class. Um, by now, we, we should know something about vectors, uh, magnitude and direction. Direction is really the key, as we're going to find out when we want to try to solve problems with vectors. And probably the, the best example to think in terms of is the example of force. We know gravity if you know, gravity always makes things move down. Not sideways, not up, nothing other than down. So down is a direction. You push on something, it's going to move in that direction. Okay, so that's really the key. Uh, other examples, by the way, would be things like velocities, accelerations, uh, momentum, electric fields, magnetic fields, things like this. We're going to be using vectors an awful lot. You'll never get away from vectors <laughs> in, in physics or engineering. So why would we want to add vectors? Well, in real life, even if you're just sitting there watching this right now, there's multiple forces acting on you, okay, multiple vectors. Gravity's pulling you down, your seat or the floor is pushing up on you, the wind might be hitting you, whatever. So you have multiple forces. The easiest case, and what you hope to get, <laughs> is when vectors are on the same line. We call those collinear vectors. And direction matters. So for this first case, the 8 newtons and 11 newtons are in opposite directions. Um, the stronger person wins, and so we'd expect that object to move to the right as if a total force of 3 newtons is pulling on it. In the second example, if the two people are pulling in the same direction, it says if you have a single person stronger, okay, 19 newtons, just the sum of those two forces, trying to pull it to the right. Now the trouble is, life isn't so simple and we almost always have to work in multiple dimensions. So we're going to do an example here of uh, three people pulling on something at different angles to each other. The cool thing is, the way nature works is that they follow the rules of right triangles. This is good news because we know how to use right triangles. We know the Pythagorean theorem, for example, so we can find the lengths of the three sides. And now, if we know some basic trigonometry, we can use sines, cosines, and tangents to help us out uh, to work out directions and also to break things up into pieces. And I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, so vector components. Those are the pieces I just mentioned. When you have something that looks like this, okay, three people pull in at different angles, uh, not necessarily right angles, we have to try, to try to make this picture look different. We have to make everything into um, right angles where we can apply these rules and be able to solve it. So what we have to do is think in terms of well, how much of each individual vector is trying to pull you in an x direction and how much of it is trying to pull you in a y direction. And that's where the right triangles come in. So for example, look at just this 20 newton force. Forget about the other two. It's at an angle relative to that horizontal line, okay, 30 degree angle. That means that part of that person is trying to pull this thing sideways to the left, the blue arrow. Simultaneously, you're also trying to pull this thing up. If we draw those two lines in, we can make this into a right triangle. And we need that red piece and that blue piece. So how much of that force, how much of the 20 newtons is actually pulling up? Well, we can find that using our trig functions up here. In this case, the sine. That has to do with the opposite side. So if we take our total force of 20 and multiply it by the sine of that 30 degree angle, okay, that's going to tell us how much of that force is pulling up on the object. Notice it's going up the positive direction, so that's going to be a positive number. Now it turns out that the sine of 30 degrees happens to be a half, so that means we have, we have a positive 10 newtons trying to pull you up, just for, from that one force. Now simultaneously, it's also trying to make you move to the left, in, the x, in this case the negative x direction. We can find out how strong that is, okay, what the length of that side is, 
if we take the, the full 20 newtons and multiply it because it's adjacent to 30 degrees, the cosine of that 30 degree angle. Now it's moving to the left, the negative direction. We have to account for that with this minus sign. Directions matter. Okay, cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. Oop, make this negative. And this turns out it's something like about a negative 17.4 or so newtons, if you round off. You can check your calculator for that. Okay, so we, we found the, the x and y components of that 20 newton force. We have to do this for each individual force. That's why I recommend making this table every single time. Um, it keeps it nice and neat. You don't have numbers and things all over your paper. And it, it'll make things easier to do our final step, which we'll see in a minute. Now, the 12 newton force. This one's a little bit easier because all of it's going to the right. It's all in the x direction. There's nothing going up or down, so there is no y component. We'll put a zero in that column. Last but not least, we've, we've got the 10 newton force. Now this one, forget about the 12 and 20. The 10 newton force, part of you is trying to pull to the left, and at the same time, part of you is trying to pull down. So we make a right triangle there. Okay, how much is going down? Well, that's opposite the 60 degrees, so we're going to use sine just like we did before for the 20. 10 times the sine of 60 degrees. It's down. Check it out. It's in the opposite direction of that 20 uh, newton force. We have to make that a negative. Okay. Now the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. And this should give you something like Rounded off about 8.7 or so newtons. What about to the left, the x component? Uh, that's going to be 10 times oops, the cosine of 60 degrees. I'm going to make it negative. It's going to the left. Okay, the cosine of 60 degrees is um, a half. Okay, so this would give us a negative 5 newtons going to the left. Okay, so why the two columns? Well, we're f literally forcing this problem to make these things perpendicular. We need a, a right triangle because right triangles, we know how to handle those. Okay, so what we do is, is we're going to add all the x's. The negative 17.4, the 12, the negative 5. Uh, so that's looking like it's going to give us a negative 10.4 newtons if we add those three numbers up. If we do the same thing in our y column, uh, this is going to give us a positive number, uh, about a 1.3 newtons. Okay, so what do, we, what do we do with these? Well, let me... So if this is our object, these three people pulling on it with those th the three forces in the original picture are equivalent to one person pulling to the left with a force of 10.4 newtons. That's our total x force. And simultaneously pulling up with a much shorter arrow, only 1.3 newtons going up. If we make a right triangle out of this, the sum of these two forces, which are perpendicular to each other, is the hypotenuse. Our total force, or our net force, is what we're going to call it. So using our rules for right triangles, we can find both that angle and the strength of the total force. We can figure out exactly what direction and how, how strong that object is going to start moving that way. Okay, so the, the strength is Pythagorean Theorem. So we can pull out our calculators and find the square root of that. And actually, I don't have that number available. <laughs> but 
we could figure that out. We could take the square root of this mess. Whatever the square root turns out to be is the strength of that net force. More confusing for most people is how to find that angle. Well, I, a lot of people like to use tangent. And using our definition up here, it's opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be 1.3 divided by 10 point, oops, 10.4. Okay. In order to find just the angle, like how many degrees it is, all you need to do on your calculator right now is find the inverse tangent of whatever this number is. Okay. So we'll, we would find the total strength of that thing. We could find the direction it'll actually start to move. If we knew the mass of the object, what we'll do later is we could find out the acceleration of the object. This is Newton's second law of motion. Okay, And it's going to move at the same angle. So this, this becomes a really powerful technique. It's something that we'll do over and over and over again, both mechanics, electricity, magnetism, and, and other areas of physics, um, and engineering, for that matter, where vectors are relevant. Okay, so again, summary, do the table, find your x and y pieces, use your total x and y to make a triangle, a right triangle, and then we can use our, our trig rules to figure out the total force and the direction that you move. So I hope this example helps and keeps things straight, and we'll get lots of practice with this in class. And until next time, we'll see you later.